Welcome to Midpoint, OCC's midweek podcast aimed at helping you connect with last week's message and prepare you for next week's sermon. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Midpoint, your midweek connection to Orchards Community Church. I am Wesley, and I'm the children's pastor here, and I have James Green with us. I do have a script for you as well. If I you am really, not Wesley. If you uh, really, if I was you really just going to let you read okay. it. Okay, that's I, what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. So <laughs> anyways. Is, they call this plausible deniability. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Wes asked some questions. Yeah. I had no idea what they were. And honestly, they're going to be like, you have a script? Uh, I do. <laughs> and this is the quality that this script gets you. <laughs> I would have thought for sure you were winging that. Yeah. No, I was really yeah, no, it. no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last week uh, we were um, continuing through Acts, and yes. we were in Acts twenty five thirteen through twenty six, or excuse me, yes, verse twenty five. Chapter 25, verse 13, all the way through chapter 26, there it is. verse 32, yeah. uh, which is all the way to the end of 26. Yeah, that's the end of that chapter. Uh, in a sermon titled Paul's Testimony. Um, and this is, I think, did you mention the third? The third that I counted that we heard his testimony just yeah. in the Acts of the Apostles. Yeah. Um, in our Misunderstood seri- series, uh, which we will remain in until we finish out Acts here, but which is coming up fast. Two more weeks. Yeah. yeah. So that's mind-boggling. Yes, me. yes, it this is. This next week is all of chapter twenty-seven. The last week is all of chapter twenty-eight, and we are done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I do have to say these big long chunks right here at the end. They feel like you're losing ambition, <laughs> <laughs> but when you read them, they make sense why you've cut it up this way. But you're, it seems like my painting projects. You know, like at the end, you're just hogging yeah. it on and spreading it out. He did seven verses last <laughs> week, and this week there's fifty-four. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you read them in context, the kind of the whole story is stuck together. There's just not good places to break. It. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I appreciate you're, it. Welcome, you're welcome. I did read ahead, and I do feel like we, you could have split up this one, yeah. but it is also. But anyways, we'll talk about that. At the yeah, end, I guess. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have, but it's it's one trip. It's the whole it trip. Is. So yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But thanks for reading ahead. You were yeah. really doing it, man. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. you what. <laughs> I, I try. This is, again, the quality that you've come next to. This is, you guys should see when I don't try. <laughs> you, you guys listening to this cannot be having as much fun as we're having doing this. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But we're glad you're listening. We love that you're here. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, so I just wanted to say first off that um, you you kind of had a twist at the end, and I just want to you know give you kudos for responding to the Holy Spirit and in, in the ending the the who's feeling sorry for who yeah I, I, that was just a really cool way to end I mean um, um, I think you're I think the I think that you're probably right in that and I just. Just, well, it's you know, hard to know. Yeah, but. I, I'm not trying to add to scripture or anything you don't know. But Paul's a real guy. This is really happening. He's going back to jail before he heads to Rome. What is he thinking about this encounter he just had? And that's the deal. I think. I mean, I would have flipped that question. Yeah, you know, they, they feel sorry for Paul. He doesn't even know that he's not at hot shots with him. But he feels sorry for Agrippa that he does not want to listen to the truth. Yeah, yeah. And, and Agrippa clearly hears because oh, yeah. he essentially repeats it back. Exactly. And yeah. so it's not like, you know like sometimes you might you might uh, share your testimony, share share the gospel with somebody, and you're like, man, I just I don't know. That would seem like it was miles over their head. That's not the case no. here. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was tracking. Yeah, he was he was definitely follow along. So. Um, you mentioned um, earlier as well this that this is the longest passage that you've ever done in a sermon. This one was, yeah. Yeah, which is pretty cool because I got to do the podcast the last time you said <laughs> that. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lucky man. This is funny. Yeah. And it was yeah. a very, very similar theme. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they were, they were very similar. So, uh, I mean, just as, as usual, I mean, we're... With a long passage like this, this one flowed pretty well. Yeah. Um, was was there areas you would have liked to dig into a little bit more? It, uh, certainly, in, in this, especially in that area of repentance, uh, and and I mean that one, I, I could have explained. I've explained, you know, kind of where we are as a church on repentance, uh, just because of that fallacy. Some people think, well, repentance means that I need to stop sinning so I can turn to the Lord. Well, if you could stop sinning on your own, you wouldn't need the Lord. So you know, so that's not accurate. You know, repentance truly is a change of our mind that results then in a change of our action. So I just threw that in as a, a bonus. But I, I also mentioned in the passage where he talked about, hey, you're going to turn from the light to the darkness. You yeah. to, I could have spent ages on that and what that looks like. And instead, we kind of had to breeze past it. So that is the biggest problem when you hit try to hit 50 verses at one time. There's going to be stuff that you want to unpack 
that you really can't. And that's why, honestly, I'm glad for this. You get the chance to go. That's something mm-hmm. that we should probably consider a little deeper. And so, yeah, that, that, that really, those were the two things that stood out in my mind. There's probably other stuff as well, but I was trying to cram. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get it all in. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, when I was in college group and <clears throat> I had learned that, or I mean, so I, I was raised Catholic. Me and James were actually just talking about yeah. this um, beforehand. And so, like, just having a relationship with Jesus, like, that was just something we never talked about. Pretty foreign. Um, and so, like, my salvation is not necessarily clear to me when it when it happened just because of, like, it's a little muddy mm-hmm. in my Catholic days. I do believe I believed that Jesus had died for me, mm-hmm. for my my sins. Um, what that looked like afterwards, though, very confusing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just remember... Um, just like learning about apologetics because the Catholics don't really do apologetics. I, I don't, that was just, I don't, maybe they do. I'm not going to speak for everybody. I just never saw much apologetics in my walk in the, in the Christian faith or in the Catholic faith. Yeah. And, uh, apologetics kind of defined as yes, def- thank you. defending your faith. Yes. It's, it's the ability to be able to give the reason for why you believe what you believe. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just remember my eyes being open to truth. Mm-hmm. Like it was like an amazing thing. Like from then on forward, I just remember looking at the world differently and seeing like, there's truth. Yeah. There's clearly truth. Um, you know, usually with, with Jesus. Um, and then the other things not being truth, yeah. you know, but the world presenting them at truth. That was just one of the things that I just remember. Yeah. That was kind of a, a light to dark moment. I think mm-hmm. we have multiples of those sometimes in our walk. Um, yeah, that, that's a neat picture of your changed mind resulting in your changed actions. You were able to see things differently yeah. that, that you hadn't just grasped before like that. So. And it was just everything. It was just like a thing that I, you know, you just, I couldn't avoid anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, was, it was an interesting, interesting thing. Neat. And Paul had a light to dark moment. <laughs> <laughs> light well, to dark. To well light. played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> light to dark and stayed dark for a while. Yeah, yeah. Back, to, back to light. Yeah. So. Yeah, good good stuff. Um, well, we didn't get any questions today, so you guys get the pleasure of hearing my questions. Which are always yeah, good. Yeah. But we love the questions, yes, so if you yeah. have them, please submit them. Yes. But again, I mean, I think this is a, just that you did such a good job. There was just not a single area of question. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> I'm so confused, I don't even know how to formulate a question. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> or it could be that. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. So... Um, you referenced First Samuel sixteen, the the yeah. latter half. The mm-hmm. Lord does not look at the things people look at; people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord the looks heart. at the heart. Yeah. Um, and while I understand this, um, this seems too simple. <laughs> um, I mean, like even even our discussion in staff yeah. meeting today, like present presentation seems to matter. Yeah. Um, and it, and we're honestly we're seeking a people group of the lost who presentation matters. So like, how do you balance that line? Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, how, how do we, how do we um, hold that truth in our heart that that's not the things that the Lord looks at while living in a world that that very much is. Is, is. Yeah. Not only what the world looks at, but a lot of times if we're honest, what we're looking at yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that one's really hard. I think it, it, flies straight to the idea of we're pretty sinful. We need someone to come and, and redeem us from these things and, and not just, you know, so much of the time, the, the problem that we run into is we just want to do the things that make us happy. We just want to, you know, and, and so in this, and I've read studies on this and it's just kind of sad, you know, but the people who get scholarships and the people who get the best paying jobs and the, you know, are the people who are better looking. <laughs> Well, that's that's really kind of bad. That, that's mm-hmm. pretty horrible. But I mean, statistics just show it over and over and over again. I, I think the the bigger question, other than you know bemoaning the fact that that's probably true, is this idea of for salvation. Like, if I'm going to go share the gospel, and there's a person who looks literally destitute and is filthy, and, you know, am I going to go hang out with them and share the gospel with them? And yeah, we I can read challenging things about Mother Teresa and how she would, you know, I'm like that's great for her. <laughs> But I don't think I'm doing that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's kind of the hard part. I, there's a weird thing um, going on back in my hometown. Um, the high school graduation was this past weekend, and there was a shooting at oh. the graduation. So they canceled the graduation. And they ended up, I don't know how all this works out, they ended up showing pictures, you know, of the guys who were involved in the shooting or like that. And it was a couple of African American guys, long cornrows. I mean, just, you know, they look, one of them, I guess is a registered sex offender, you know, and, and boy, just the vitriol that's spilling out on these two guys, you know, 
And I'm not saying, I mean, dear goodness, one of them shot another guy <laughs> inside the, the graduation ceremony. But, you know, there was not one of, man, these guys need Jesus. You know, and, and again, it was on a social media platform. It wasn't like it was in the church. But I mean, like, I, I knew several folks who went to church who were responding to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that didn't seem to be the heart. It was, oh, this world's horrible and this and that. Well, did, have people just avoided these guys? One, one guy did comment, and I thought it was, you know, like, based on the things, because it was father-son. And it was based on the things the father had done. What chance did this kid have? Mm-hmm. Now, again, scripturally, we're not you know held accountable for the sins of the father. Like we have to make our own choices. But I do understand the sins of the father impact us, and this is what you see in scripture it impacts to the third and fourth generation. Because man, it's hard to get out of that cycle. Mm-hmm. Like yep. like if you are raised by a father who's a drug dealer or whatever like that, what are the chances you're going to end up in that life? It, it, I mean, you still make the choices. You could make the choice to get out, and God will provide the way. But man, that's that's a hard one, you know. So, those are the kind of things where you know, if somebody is, again, evaluating outward appearances, we're going to go to the people typically who look like us. We're going to gravitate towards that. Then we just have an affinity towards that. And I, I don't think that's what Scripture teaches whatsoever. Scripture teaches as as much as we can. And this is the part I'm not trying to throw this up as a roadblock, but this is the impossible part. I don't see hearts the way God does. <laughs> God looks at hearts and knows things, and I, I can't evaluate hearts that way. So what do we do? You know, do you put somebody through the fruit test, or, or do you say, goodness, the, the circumstances this person has dealt with, they need somebody to give them a break. I'm going to, you know, I hope that we think that way. But if I'm real honest, I don't always think that way, and I know I've messed that up. And, and some of it is. We've talked about, you know, people who are hard to love. And th- that's a phrase that has always kind of just stuck with me because... Like, I I truly think this, and I don't think this is super accurate theologically, so I try to back it. Like, if, if, if I was hard to love for God, I'd be really, really hard to love because I know me. You know? Mm-hmm. But God yeah. doesn't look at us that way. God looks at the heart, and he knows things. You know? And so I just I think about my lifestyle, and I think about the times I've just thumbed my nose at him and choices I still make that are poor, you know? And I'm like, man, if God really evaluated people the way we do, I'd be in big trouble. We'd all be in trouble. So I love the verse, I, and obviously in the context of, of David and so on, you know, I, I get that. But do we do it? Do we apply it real well? Gosh, Wesley, I don't, I don't think we do. Yeah. <laughs> and like I say, and I hate to lump a bunch of people in with me. I, I guess I should just say I know I don't do that real well all the time. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like I, I think of John the Baptist, and like it doesn't. I don't think. I don't recall it outright saying, but he seems like an interesting dude, to say the least. Like <laughs> dude walking up wearing those clothes? Yeah, yeah. Was it like eating camel that skins? Food? Is yeah. that what he, and, yeah. and eating locusts? Yeah. You're like eh. he had to be a little bit out Kids, there. Kids stay away. Yeah. <laughs> is what you'd get. Yeah. yeah. And and he seemed to be I mean, I don't know. Like he, he seemed to be um, I don't know, like what we'd call a loner yeah. to some degree. Like he kind of seemed to be you know, granted but but then like just did these crazy things. I mean, the Holy Spirit was just clearly working through Obviously him. And, working, yeah. But, and, but again, and, and some of this is the humanist part. You're like, dude, if you want a guy to go ahead of Jesus and, and champion Jesus coming, pick a pick a different guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. think this is your best guy. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, I and, hear what you're saying. And, and anyway, I, I, I always just think of that as encouragement for your, myself, like especially yeah. stepping into a a people group that isn't like me. Yeah. Cause there's also comfort on the other side of that, of like, like I know I can make it with these guys, yeah. you know? Um, well, it, it's a hard thing. And, and I mean, I think about this, uh, you mentioned some young life stuff earlier and, and that to me is one of the beauties of the young life ministry. You'll get leaders who'll go to the high school campus and engage with kids who don't look like them, who aren't, you know, but it is hard again. And some of it is the, the affinity part. And, and some of that for me, and I'm, I'm not trying to overplay the race card on this. I really pray I'm not. Because I mean, I grew up in a virtually all black community. I had a lot of black friends, and and so I mean, when I was doing Young Life, I still had a lot of black friends, and and I really connected with the kids who were playing sports, and I'd go do that stuff with them. But there were certain kids in that community who would not talk to me. I, just, I don't think they trusted me, literally, because I was white. And and so I mean, I remember trying to make inroads in with some of these guys. One of my dearest friends, a, a guy who is God has really blessed this guy, and he he's given the glory to God got a neat um, uh, concrete finishing business and employing a bunch of folks. And, I mean, just doing so well. He was one of my best buddies in high school. He babysat my kids, which is hilarious. That this young black dude <laughs> watching my kids. <laughs> but I trusted him. You know, he's just a great guy. 
And, and like I, I would use, uh, use is a bad word, I'd leverage uh, my buddy Jeremiah. I was like, hey, introduce me to that guy or this guy or whatever. Hey, you want to invite that guy to lunch? Or, and I remember uh, Dookie was his, <laughs> Jeremiah Dukes is his name. I don't know if I'm supposed to give out his name here, but everybody called him Dookie. And I was like, hey, <laughs> dude, hey Dookie, why don't you go ask those guys if they want to go to lunch with us? And, and Jeremiah walked over there and asked these guys. And I remember they looked at Jeremiah and then they looked at me. And then they looked back at Jeremiah and they shook their head, no. <laughs> nah, yeah. it's just not going to happen. Well, and, and I mean, they didn't know me from Adam. And mm-hmm. I thought that Jeremiah would give me some cred. No, they just didn't want everything to do with me. We look at the outward appearance a lot more than maybe than we're saying we do. I wish we were able to look at hearts. We don't. We trust the Lord on that. And I think that's part of the deal. Like, I, I, I say this because this is what I do for homeless people who are standing out in front of Walmart begging. Like, I don't give to those people. I, but I have made the promise to the Lord, like I commit, I pray. And, and I'm saying, God, if you want me to give to that person, you're going to have to show it to me. And most often, I don't give. Uh, I, I just don't feel that, that God is wanting me to do that for whatever reason, and if they're running a scam or what, I don't know. But there are times, and it's happened pretty often, where like I've praying and I've driven a block away and I'm like, oh, crud, (laughs) like God really wants me. And you got to circle back, you know? Well, those are people that like I had already judged. I was like, "Eh, they look like, I mean, where'd they get the cardboard and the Sharpie to make that sign? Like, I think they're trying to scam me. Like that was already in my head. And that's why I've committed to pray because I know I would just bypass everybody like that. And I need to look at people the way God looks at people. Mm -hmm. And I struggle doing that. A long-winded answer for that, but man, do I struggle doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then like, th- there's a self-righteousness sometimes in that where you're like, I know what's going to happen, and th- in those situations, you don't always know what's going to happen. But then sometimes you do, and you're like, see, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like, you then you hold that over them too. Yes. Like, yeah. Um, uh, no, I, I get that. Uh, yeah, it's definitely rough. But we're um, we're in this world, and and Paul. Um, you know, talks about doing, you know, when he's in Rome, you know, acting, acting like the Romans. And so there is a, there is a portion where you're trying to, to, to fit in, but, um, Paul's security wasn't in that. No. Well, and there's a sense, Wesley, because I mean, we get this, we get the things that we have in the canon of scripture. And most of the time, Paul looks like a superhero and Paul looks like he does this all right, you know? And it, I don't know if it's supposed to be comforting. You go and read Romans where he says, I know the good I ought to do and I don't do it. And you're like, well, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Otherwise I thought you were nailing this, you know? Paul struggled as well. And I don't know what, you know, specifically he's referencing those things, but he wasn't perfect in this either, which is why he realizes he needs Jesus. And and if that's the the big lesson out of this is we all need some Jesus. That's a good lesson. I'll take that. But I just wish I didn't blow it so much just based on the appearances you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Goodness. Yeah. Tough, tough question. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Uh, we'll take more listener questions from now on. But... <laughs> Well, that's because you get the questions that I'm actually struggling with. <laughs> they're, ge- they're genuine. <laughs> uh, the next one, hopefully, is going to be a home run for you. I'm teeing it up right now. <clears throat> um, so you talked about kind of the the three part um, testimony: yeah, yeah. the the I was mm-hmm. Jesus, and and now I'm kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't. Those that was my words, but yeah. essentially that that was it. Um. But I, I'm not, and I see this. Um, I'm telling you that I see this a lot, kind of even on YouTube, that these pastors are like, only the gospel, mm-hmm. only the gospel. Yeah. You know, like the you need to let all the other stuff go, and, and on, only the gospel. Um, and it's you know probably a middle ground. Um, is that three part testimony enough? Is my question. And then, um, what level of the gospel does there need yeah. to be? I would contend there almost certainly has to be some level of the gospel in there. That being said, could God, I mean, I always think of the story of the guy, Edward Kimball, who shared the gospel with D.L. Moody and, and Kimball, you know, went in to, to only share the gospel, the gospel only, and went in and thought he'd botched it horribly, got none of it right. Moody accepted Christ and became D.L. Moody, you know. So I don't really even know how much of the presentation on our part matters. <laughs> like God's really in charge of that yeah, whole thing anyway. I would agree. Mm-hmm. But that being said, yes, I do think we have to be really, really cognizant of, am I presenting the true gospel and am I presenting it accurately? And and, and again, those because the, the gospel could be true and I can mess it up real bad and make it sound something different and that's on me, Right. Or I can actually present, you know, it whatever I'm trying to say pretty accurately, and nobody understand actually what Jesus did, and then it becomes showy for me, you know. And, and so I think there's a check in that. 
the thing that I love about using your three-part testimony, as long as we make sure to include, hey, there's a moment where you have to profess faith, you know, as long as we do that, then we don't get bogged down in, well, I forgot what the verse was, or I know there's a story in the Bible that does this or whatever. If we're telling our story, we're pretty familiar with our story. Mm -hmm. We normally don't forget the end, Mm -hmm. you know? Now, in saying that, I told my testimony kind of incorrectly for a long time, and I was convicted of it because like I... It, talking about those three parts, and you know, here's your the time before you knew Jesus, here's the Jesus event in your life, here's what your life looks like now. And I'd share my testimony, and 90% of it was how horrible I was and all the things, all the bad stuff I was doing. You know. And then I was like, and then I met Jesus, and now I'm a young life leader. <laughs> and, and that was true. But man, like what it ended up having high school kids do, especially, because I had a kid come and just tell me this. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I, I'm going to wait and accept Jesus later on <laughs> because I want to I want to have a life like you did. I want to be able to have a lot of fun. And then when I get older, I'll accept Jesus. And I was like, that's what you took away <laughs> from my testimony was that you can just kind of chill and wait. And I had to go back and get real serious with that guy. And 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 you know, he's a older high school kid. He was a junior, I think. But I mean, like I was like, there's nothing fun about these things that happened in this part of my life. I mean, for you to sit and think that it's fun to be blackout drunk and not know where your car is or, or not know who you're with when you wake up in a bed. I mean, yeah, it just like there's things, I don't know how you think that's fun, but but I get it. I mean, because at the time I thought it was fun. It's almost like Paul in this story now where he's saying, you know, I, I kind of get that the Jews want to kill me because I used to want to kill the Jews the same way. But we have to make sure that we're pointing to Christ on that and not just, hey, I told a great story. But, but I think that's one of the fears of our testimony because we're like, well, Pastor James told his testimony and his testimony is great. And Wesley shared his testimony and he struggled with this. And now he's in on pastoral staff and my testimony is pretty boring. And I always get so frustrated mm-hmm. at that. And I, yeah. ho- I hope my frustration doesn't come out. But I mean, like, I, I just want to challenge people. Like, do you hear yourself talking? Like, you're saying the story of how God saved you, the, the story of how you met Jesus and professed faith in him is boring. Because I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think that's the greatest story you're ever going to tell. Yeah. And the reality is there's somebody out there who's got a life very similar to yours, and they, don't, they won't connect with my story, your story whatsoever. They'll connect with your story 100%. And that may be the thing that God uses. Christine, my wife, I'll throw her under the bus because um, I don't think she'll you know, <laughs> hit me later for it. She used to say that on my story. Yeah. So boring. Because yeah. I went to church as a kid and I was a good kid and I never really did. I mean, she had a couple. I, of, I struggle with that too. Yeah. yeah. She, had, she had a couple things she did that were, but like her, the, the biggest part of her testimony is I went to church. I did all these things. I had no idea what a relationship with Jesus was about. Mm-hmm. Like, like it was just a foreign concept to me. And then through the ministry of Young Life, she figured it out. She's like, I'm doing all these things, trying to do good works to earn something that I can't earn. I need to have a relationship with Jesus. And when that clicked for her, I mean, she, she went to college and she got great grades and she was, you know, that was all wonderful, well and good for her. She basically majored in Young Life in college. Like she gave all her spare time to volunteering in Young Life because that understanding that about the gospel was the most important thing for her. <laughs> and I mean, that's again, that's how I ended up meeting her. But I mean, she every summer she would go to camp, she'd go do work crew, summer staff. She was just all in because through Young Life, she had realized, I don't have a relationship with the Lord. And then she began one. So it, it's a powerful testimony to me. Mm-hmm. And I know many others have been, you know, but she's like, well, you know, there's no jail time in it. Well, like, yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in that, it, it kind of, that's a long uh, around uh, about approach. But in that, yeah, is it, is it okay to just share your testimony and say, here's what happened for me? I guess as long as you make sure that you explain at a point in that Jesus event that, yes, God saved you, but he saved you by his grace through you professing faith. And, and so be able to explain, here's what happened in that. There was a moment. There, there's, there's a single moment in time where we are saved, and, and that happens the moment we profess faith. And so just making sure that that part is included in there. Now, you can explain a whole lot of other stuff in there as you're doing it to try and present the gospel well. And, and get to, well, I did all these things and I realized I was trying to work my way and I can't, I mean, that's great if, if you include more of that story. But but again, I, I, it is, I guess, a little bit of a both end, the whole idea of you can only go out and share the gospel. Well, our story matters to God. God made us who we were. He kind of wired us and bent us a particular way. And the way that he saved us is unique mm-hmm. for everybody. And even in this story, Paul uses his story. 
I mean, that's, I mean, like he, he, he talks yeah. about the Damascus road yeah. um, incident. Like, it's not like he left that part out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, but again, and, and some of it I'm sure is because of the audience, Agrippa and the Jewish folks and everything, but yeah, to, to make sure, I mean, he knew they knew a lot of that stuff, but he still went ahead and shared that part of the story mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah, so. Don't, don't forget about this part of me. Yeah. 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 So no, I, but, but again, I just, the challenge for me is I think a lot of people who go, well, there's just no way I could do it. I could never evangelize cause I can't, I don't know enough verses or I don't know this or that. You know your story, and that's really a great place to start. Is it great to have a good gospel presentation as well? Should you memorize the Romans Road or, or you know, know the bridge illustration? I think that's a great idea mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. But I don't know that anything can really beat the authenticity of your own testimony. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the nice thing, too, about your own testimony and in, in, uh, especially everyday life stuff is if you get interrupted... Um, you can pick up where you left off. Right where where left sometimes off. when you're explaining the gospel and you get stopped in the middle. <laughs> where was where, I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. Um, Very true. But, Very true. Um, not, but I think both of them are, are important. I would agree. Um, in this story, because um, – so I, I left the questions from last time. I'm not going to read through them. Just <laughs> I just want you to know that I left them because all the questions from were the last similar? time, they were similar. <laughs> and they, work for, they work for this story as well. But um, this story mirrors his arrest. Yeah. There's a There's a – lot of similarities between these two. I especially know since I was on the podcast for that one. <laughs> um, but um, this time around, Paul seems much more composed. Like he, the, I mean, I, I just can't help but when you're reading, when he gets arrested, he seems to be a little more frantic. Like yeah. I'm just going to shotgun everything that I can possibly think of yeah. as I'm. He kind of lashes here. out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and he's super wise. I, even in that, I think, I mean, you can tell he's a very wise guy. He wasn't, he wasn't causing a scene necessarily. He did end up causing a scene a little bit by speaking different languages and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, uh, but, but he seems much more composed. So my, my first question, there's a chunk of time between these two is yeah. like, they read very close together, but they're not actually close together in time. No, no. Yeah. I mean, cause well, by the time we get here at Acts 26, he's been in jail for two years. Yeah. Okay. You know, two years. You know, above yeah. and beyond the other time that would have passed probably months between the arrest and everything. So yeah. Uh, so, th- so there's that amount of time. I don't know that that is the thing that accounts for the difference. And, and I really don't know that we see in the text clearly what accounts other than the fact that like if we're just honest and we think about trials we've gone through, and and again, this is me kind of just talking more than anything on this. I, I know that Paul was a man of prayer. We see that so obviously through Scripture. And, and when you pray, I mean, like it would be neat, I guess, if you could pray and say, God, take me out of this situation. Like that would be really cool. And other than the Ethiopian eunuch, I've never seen that happen. I've never, <laughs> I've never seen we're in one spot. Woo! Kawump. Yeah, and all of a sudden we're in a different spot. And, and so, you know, and, and people talk about this all the time. Well, what's the point of the prayer then? Well, the prayer may not change the circumstances you're in, but the char- prayer changes you and your heart while you're in the circumstances. And, and I think there's a phenomenal example of that this next week to tease next week. But, you know, Paul's in a spot where legitimately he, he's fearful. You know, an angel shows up and, and says, don't be afraid. Well, every time they show up and say that, it's because <laughs> you're afraid, you know? And, and Paul goes from being fearful because of the circumstances he's in to being confident. But he's still in the same circumstances. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so as you see this, I mean, yeah, I, I, I truly do, I kind of feel for Paul in this. Like his heart... And again, I'm not, uh, this is me talking through a lot of theology that I've worked through. I think Paul would have preferred to have been the apostle to the Jews. Like, <laughs> that's really where his heart was. And and so being the ambassador to the Gentiles, that's fantastic. You know, and, and he obviously redeemed that. But then still every town he'd go to, he'd go to the synagogue first. He was hanging out with the Jews. He had just had a huge heart for these lost Jewish people. And so this idea of going back to Jerusalem for him I think he thought, well, man, this is fantastic. I've spent all this time, you know, talking to the Gentiles. Now I'm really going to go and you're going to use me to save some Jews. I don't save anybody you save, but I'm going to be, you know. And of course, it didn't turn out like that at all. And I think that had to be frustrating for him, you know. And again, as he's making the case so clearly here, he's really on trial for talking about Jesus resurrected when the reality is the Jews had already heard that. (laughs) He's like, well, do you prosecute everybody who mentions this? You know? and, yeah. and so it just seems like such a weird dichotomy for him to be in that spot. And I, and I think the only thing that gives him any real you know, measure of composure there, and, and like you say, he does seem to, to, not that he's okay with the surroundings, but, but he just has more composure at the end, 
is that he's praying and, and he realizes, okay, God's still up to something here. I'm still supposed to go to Rome. He says, I'm supposed to be his witness there. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to trust God and just join in where he goes. That's pretty easy to say and very, 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 very hard to do. Yeah, yep. <laughs> but I would agree, and I think that's a good catch. I think he his composure changes, his, his general comportment changes. And, and it's almost funny because arrest Paul there at the beginning is madman Paul. Like, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because even even just because he shares his testimony there. Yeah, um, but, but it's like, like he's a last minute, like crazy stuff as he's turning around. Oh wait! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I say, he really does. He, he comes up with some stuff where he might have been stretching the truth. You're like, what what is going on with him here? Mm-hmm. And and again, I think he's human, just like us. But he he didn't miss the opportunity <laughs> to preach the gospel, to share his testimony with these folks who wanted to arrest him, kill him. Paul's got one up on me. I know. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. So it's a. Yeah, uh, it's a strange, it's a strange thing. Because so, when do you know about what time is? Was in the sixties. This, um, the, I believe, this trip that he's taken uh, here from Caesarea to trying to get to Rome uh, was about fifty nine eighty. Oh, okay, yeah. So I mean, you're really close uh, to that time spot. So he would have written several letters before this. Um, I, I, I know this just because I went back to look because in um, Corinthians. He mentions that he's been shipwrecked three times, and that was written somewhere around 55 to 57 A.D. And so, you know, it's just kind of tough to, to say, but I think this would have been his fourth shipwreck now <laughs> that he's going through. He's seen a lot of stuff. And so, yeah, timeline-wise, I think that's about when we are in this time. So, Yeah. If you believe the Bible knowledge commentary, which I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's kind of interesting because at this point... The I mean I'm just trying to think of the world history for it, which I'm not very good at, yeah. but the the um, kind of Jewish revolt is really mm-hmm. beginning to yeah. start around this time. Yeah, I mean because that's going to end with the destruction of the temple yeah. in 70 A.D. So that's another 10, 11 years away. But yeah, that that's what you're going to start to see. It, it, this is the the birth pangs of that kind of issue. So, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's and a neat catch just, from a history standpoint. Because you just you just like it just seems like. They're just going through the motions with Paul, and he just it just seems like there's bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Again, we why ha- do we have this yeah, guy? We have hindsight on our side. They yeah, didn't. They did but not. Man, they blew it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, speaking of shipwrecked, <laughs> <laughs> let's look to next week. Okay, I was, gonna say, I was like, where are you going? Now? <laughs> this podcast. <I've> got- <laughs> And there you are. We always we always wonder where the title for the podcast yeah. is going to come. We just found it. Yeah. I guarantee. You. Yeah. Next week, yeah, this is a neat, neat story. And again, big another big chunk of scripture, but it does kind of flow together. But I think just a real neat. And and again, hope I'm not reading more into what we're seeing here. But when we study the the Bible, the whole idea is to be able to figure out how am I supposed to apply this in my life in a way where I'm loving the Lord more, following hard after Him. And so Paul has this. Goodness gracious, ordeal, you know, in this sh- ship and, and trying to get to Rome. And in it, he weathers a storm, you know, and then the people on the ship with him. And I think there's real obvious takeaways there for how we're supposed to weather the storms mm-hmm. in our life. You know, everybody you know, I shouldn't say everybody, but I mean, most of the time, if you go into a group as large as we'll have sitting, you know, listening to a sermon, everybody's got some kind of storm going on. I mean, they're all different. It could be mm-hmm. emotional or spiritual or financial or physical. I mean, you got body ailments, you got all kinds of stuff. You got some kind of storm going on, and you're trying to figure out, okay, where's God in this? You know, and that to me, I think that there's a real clear. I mean, like this is the outlines have been long because the passages have been so long recently. But this outline's super simple. I mean, there's some context at the beginning, but then that is just three points. Hey, do we recognize that God has a purpose for these trials in our life? Do we recognize that God makes promises that he's going to keep? Do we recognize that God protects us? Like those are the things we got to be looking for. And those, of course, are the first things that when a trial comes up, I forget to ask those questions. Yeah. <laughs> and I just go, what are you doing, God? <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. yeah. And this, the the passage coming up too has kind of an interesting thing because they're, the, the storm seems clear in front of them, and yet they push into it anyway. Yeah. Um, and you can say that the the centurion, or is, I think that's what they yeah. refer to him as, um, changes their action because they know it's ahead. Yeah. You know, like... Well, th- there's a neat spot in there, and I don't know how much I'm going to be able to flesh it out. 
and I get this. I mean, you, and, and again, the, I'm giving away a bunch on this, but but Paul has a centurion assigned to him who basically is, I mean, and this is the way the Roman Empire worked. Like there's a spot right at the very end of the story where they're getting ready to, to actually, you know, get off the ship. And it says the soldiers were going to kill all the prisoners. And, and you're like, well, that seems harsh. <laughs> you made it, made it this far. But you got to remember in the Roman Empire, as a guard, if a prisoner got away, you'd be killed. And so, like, they don't, they're not messing around. Like, and, and I think it also probably indicates these were some bad dudes. Like, Paul, Paul wasn't on the boat with a bunch of jaywalkers. Like, these were bad guys. So they're just going to kill him. So the centurion who's in charge of Paul, like, they end up being, I'm not saying they're best buddies or whatever, but, like, the very first stop they make, the centurion lets Paul go visit the church and kind of, you know, and it's like Paul's already earned this guy's trust. Well, they get to a spot where they're like, hey, should we set out here? I can't remember where they're, they're in a bay, Fairhaven's Bay, I think. And, and they're like, hey, should we set out from here? And Paul goes, uh-uh, not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the pilot of the ship, like the captain goes, yeah, we should go. And the centurion trusts the captain of the ship. And I'm like, well, he's the captain of the ship. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul's Paul, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I mean, we, we take people's expert opinion. I get that. Well, then everything goes crazy. And then later Paul stands up to say something. And everybody's like, preach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, dude, you were right. We shouldn't have done yeah. this <laughs> in the first place. And Paul has earned more trust in there. Well, all he's doing is trying to listen to God and, and bring God the glory. Uh, but because God allowed all those horrible things to happen, man, everybody was all ears when Paul <laughs> started talking again. God has purposes in these trials. It's hard to see sometimes, mm-hmm. especially while it's going on. And then you get to the end, you're like, oh, well, I think I got it. You know? And so I think we see a lot of that. And it's a neat story how it plays out. So I hope we can jam everything into 40 minutes and see, yeah. <laughs> see what we come up with. Yes. I'm excited about yes. it. Good passage. And, and I'm excited and sad about kind of wrapping up the study. Honestly, it's been a very, it's been super good for me. I, I feel like I've learned a ton. So, Yeah. No, but I, and I think, I mean... Just as a church body, I mean, Acts is is a important. just a cool is yeah. a cool study and important to the life of the church. Yeah. yeah, yep, yep. So, looking forward to that. Well, that's all the time we have uh, for this week. We hope you've enjoyed this week's midpoint. Um, hopefully, it wasn't a huge Our shipwreck. shipwreck. <laughs> That was really good. That was really good. <laughs> if you if you would like to send questions or just uh, just comments about uh, the absurdities, uh, please email or text occpodcast at lewisandocc.org. Um, or you can submit a connection card. That also works, that too. That works, too. Um, or that you can use the Dropbox outside of the auditorium. Uh, be sure to join us live or in person on Sundays at 9 or 1030. We also have a Monday night service at 7 um, for weekend warriors or if you work weekends we'd love to have you at the same service we hope to see you guys all very soon we're so glad that you guys are staying connected with us throughout the week just being a part of the church body and you are so loved here at OCC we love you guys thanks 